All right, guys, welcome to this page of the notes, and here we go. Time for our second objective. The first objective was to find the LCM of polynomials, both monomials and polynomials. The second objective is to then add and subtract rational expressions, which we will do here. Now, the parallel to arithmetic is adding and subtracting fractions. Whenever you add and subtract fractions, which I've got a couple of examples for you here, adding and subtracting, right? In order to add and subtract fractions, you guys know you must have a common denominator, right? You've got to find a common denominator. Then once you've got the common denominator, you'll then add the numerators or subtract the numerators, whatever it is, and keep your common denominator, all right? I won't bore you with going through how that works. I, I, I know you guys remember how to add and subtract fractions. So what we'll do is we'll just jump into uh, our very first problem with adding and subtracting rational expressions, all right? And I'm going to show you two ways of doing it, two different ways of doing it. Now, if you're taking this class with me, I'll let you know which way you're going to need to do it for me. If you're taking this course somewhere else, it'll depend on what your teacher uh, prefers, whichever method they prefer. So here we go. We have our very first example problem. Actually, um, I I'll come back to that in a second. You not necessary. Here we go. Our first example problem, I want you to add uh, these rational expressions. Okay. We know that in order to add and subtract, in this case add, I need to find a common denominator. And what we're going to do is we're going to make our common denominator the LCM of 15y squared and 18xy. So let's find that first. I have 15y squared. Well, 15 factors into 3 times 5 times y squared. 18xy factors into 2 times 9, but 9 is a 3 squared. So 2 times 3 squared times x times y. That means that my LCM is 2 times 3 squared times 5 times x times y squared, which means that my LCM is equal to, let's see, 3 squared is 9, that's 18. 18 times 5 is 90, so 90xy squared. That's my LCM. So the LCM of my denominators, the least common multiple of my denominators is 90xy squared. So here's what you're going to do. In order to find the common denominator, you will make the common denominator the LCM. I need to turn this 15y squared into a 90xy squared. And I need to turn this 18xy into a 90xy squared. That way, this becomes my least common denominator. All right, here's how you're going to do that. I have 7x over... 15y squared. Now, in order to turn a 15y squared into a 90xy squared, well, what times 15 gets you 90? Well, 6. 6 times 15 will get me 90. I already have the y squared. All I need is that x. So, we'll put an x in there. But algebra says when it comes to fractions, whatever you do to the bottom, you've got to do it to the top. So multiply the top by 6x as well. And again, the reason I'm multiplying 6x, top and bottom, is because 6x will turn this 15y squared into my LCM, 90xy squared. And I want my common denominator to be my LCM. Okay, keep going plus y over 18xy. All right, once again, I have 18xy, but I need this to be 90xy squared. Okay, what times 18 gets you 90? Well, 5 does. 
5 times 18 will get me to, uh, will get me 90. I already have an x. I already have a y. But I need a y squared. So I need a y in here as well. And algebra says whatever you do to the bottom, you got to do to the top as well. And again, the reason I'm multiplying top and bottom by a 5y is because 5 times 18 gets me 90. The x is already there. y times y gets me y squared. And now, this is going to be 90x squared y. This is going to be 90xy. I'm sorry, I believe I said 90x squared y. I apologize. This will become 90xy squared. This will become 90xy squared. And that is my least common denominator. I'll now be able to add these fractions. OK, so here we go. We do this multiplication. Um, 7 times 6 should get you 42. x times x, x squared. I already know what these are going to be. They're going to be a 90 xy squared. That's why I multiply by 6x. I multiply by 6x so I get my LCM. Plus, 5 times y, uh, 5y times y gets me 5 y squared. And again, I already know what the bottom is going to be. I multiplied by 5y so that the bottom would become my LCM. So 90xy squared. Well, there you go. I have a common denominator. That common denominator is my LCM. And I'll explain the importance of the LCM here in just a second. So I write my new fraction with my common denominator, which is the 90xy squared, my LCM. Add the numerators. 42x squared plus 5y squared. Okay, guys, you can, the, these are not like terms. Please do not give me 47x squared y squared. Remember, in order to add like terms, the variables must be the same and the powers must be the same. Yes, the powers are the same, squared and squared. But the variables are not the same. This is an x, this is a y. These are not like terms. You cannot put them together. We'll just simply write it as 42x squared plus 5y squared over 90xy squared. Now, here's why we spent all that time finding the LCM. I know because I use the least common multiple. LCM, the least common multiple, I know that my numerator and my denominator won't have a GCF, a greatest common factor, bigger than one, because I used the least common multiple. That means the only thing my numerator and denominator will have in common is a one. So why I use the LCM is I know that by using the LCM as my common denominator, once I get this answer, it is already simplified. There is no need to factor. There's no need to try and find a GCF to cancel out. I use the LCM. That means there is no GCF. I use the least common multiple. Guys, if you're taking this class with me, this is the way I want you to do these problems for this reason. I'm going to ask you to find the LCM anyway. All right? You're going to have to find the LCM for me. And since I'm going to ask you to find the LCM anyhow, you might as well just use it to do the problem. But there is another way. So if you're taking this class with someone else, the next page I'll show you the other way of doing this problem. For those of you who are taking the class with me, it'll help you see why this is kind of my preferred method. So head on over to the next page of the notes uh, and I'll meet you guys there.